today we look how to make shapes in DaVinci Resolve. You can put circles, rectangles, triangles, and any other type of shapes in your videos. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve and I've created a basic project. I added some footage of a hot air balloon to our timeline. I put it there just to have a background, but you don't actually need any video in your project at all. Now you might be expecting there to be some tool where you can just draw shapes over your video here, but that's not quite how DaVinci Resolve works. Rather, there's a separate tool called Fusion. It has tons of graphics features you can add to your videos. In fact, many people get kind of overwhelmed with it. But don't worry, we'll go through it step by step in this video. The first thing we need to do is add a fusion composition to our timeline. I can do that by selecting the Effects tab up here, Effects. And I'll make sure I'm selected at the top level toolbox. And I'll search for a fusion composition. I'll type fusion comp, that should find it. Again, make sure you're at this top level at the toolbox. And I'll drag the fusion composition down here. Now, if I play my video here, you can see it's just a black overlay, not too interesting yet. What we wanna do is work on this fusion composition on the fusion tab. So make sure you select that clip here and then click this button down here that says fusion. So I'll click this. And now you can see we're on a different workspace. If you haven't used this interface before, this exercise of making a simple shape is a great way to get started. So up here we have our viewers. For convenience, they give us the option to have two viewers. I'm just gonna switch it to one for now. So I'll click this box here. This is single viewer. It's not just one viewer. If you wanna go back to two viewers, just click the double rectangles here. Later, I'll show you the benefit of using multiple viewers, but for now, we'll just use one. Down here, we have our nodes. Fusion uses a node-based framework. This is different than a layer-based framework you may have used in other programs. While nodes may seem a little confusing at first, it's actually a much more powerful way of working than just stacking layers on top of each other. Right now, we just have one node called Media Out. And this is going to be the output of our fusion composition. There are two main ways to create shapes in DaVinci Resolve. The first is the mask method. And the second is the shape method. I'll show you both methods in this video. Let's start with the mask method. It's a little bit older, but still used a lot. So I'll start by adding a background node to our flow. I can add a background node by clicking this button here, background. So I'll click this and it adds it into my composition. This gray box is the output of my background. So I'll click and drag it into the media out. I'll let go. Now you can see we're actually putting something on the screen. Now with my background node selected, I have the inspector tab over here. You may have used the inspector tab in the edit page as well. It's the way you can modify the properties of what you have selected. So right now we're looking at our background node. And the reason it's black is because black is selected right here. Let's make it something more interesting. I'll click this. I'll select something like yellow. Don't forget to drag this part up here. And I'll click OK. So now we have a yellow background. Now we'll go back to the edit page. I'll click this button down here, edit. And I can see if I play my video, our fusion composition is just a yellow background. So again, not terribly interesting, but that's the most basic thing you can basically do. Let's go back to fusion. Now in general, the way this method works is that we've created this solid background here. And we're going to mask out our shape. Up here on the toolbar, we have some basic shapes, rectangle, ellipse, and a polygon. Let me show you how to get a more complete list of shapes. Here I can click the effects button. I can expand tools. I'll scroll down and I'll select mask. And now this is my full range of options here. You can see some of the familiar ones, ellipse, polygon, rectangle, but then you see some other ones too, triangle, B spline. Let's start with an ellipse. I'll take the ellipse. I'll click and drag it down onto my canvas. I'll let go. And once again, I'll connect my nodes. So I'll drag the gray output onto the background. I'll let go. And now you can see we've masked our background. And on the canvas, there's some additional controls here. I can resize the ellipse. I can move it around, all sorts of things. So let's go back to my edit tab now. And you can see this is what it looks like. I'll play it here. And you can see our fusion composition is just a yellow circle. Let's go back to the fusion tab. So these nodes are flowing in the direction of the arrows, but the position of the nodes on the canvas doesn't actually matter. So if I move them around like this, it's actually the same exact thing. The arrows are flowing this way. The color of the arrows and the color of the inputs does matter, but the way they're organized on the screen does not. However, I think it's a good practice to keep things organized. So I'm just gonna make it go from left to right. I'll just drag them like this. And I think this is just easier to visualize. Let's look at making a rectangle instead. I could click and drag the rectangle down here. I could also search for the rectangle and you can search by holding shift and pressing spacebar. And I could type rectangle. 
There it is. I'll select it and I'll click add. And it's added onto my canvas. So I'll disconnect the ellipse. I'll just click on this line here to break it. And I'll drag the rectangle to the background. And there we go. Now with my rectangle selected, let's look at the inspector tab over here. You can see there's all sorts of options for modifying my shape. I can change the softness of the edge to give it a little bit of a blur. I could invert it like that. I could also make an outline. So I'll click off the solid here. That initially makes it invisible, but you can increase the border width to give it an outline like that. And there's many other options down here you can explore. Just remember that if you want to change the color, you have to go back to the background node and then change the color over here. Let's also look at how to create a custom shape. So I'll disconnect this here. And the custom shape is going to be a polygon. So there's many ways we can get the polygon there, but I'll just click this polygon here. Now with the polygon node selected, I can actually click and drag my shape. I'll hook up the polygon to the background. And here we have our custom shape. I can drag the points around. There's many other options up here you can do with the polygon and you can explore those as you like. So this is our custom polygon here. So that was the mask method. Let's look at our second technique, the shape method. I've reset my workspace here. Let's look at our effects tab again. So effects. And if I expand the tools, if I scroll down, you'll see this section called shape. So let's click on that. And this has lots of cool options for shapes. So if I scroll down, you can see an n-gon, that's like hexagons and octagons. Other polygons, once again, rectangles, stars. Let's try adding a star. So I'll click on a star, I'll drag it over to my canvas. And now I'll try to connect it to my media out. So I'll click this and I'll drag. And nothing is happening. The reason this isn't working is because the output of these nodes are vectors. And our media out is expecting a bitmap. So we need something to convert our vectors to a bitmap. And that is what the S render node does. It's actually right above my star here, S render. So I'll click and drag this over. And I'll connect all of these together. So I'll drag the S render to the media out. And I'll drag the star into the S render. And now you can see the output here. So if I click on the star, on the inspection tab, we have all sorts of additional options. I can increase the points, change the depth. If I go to the style tab, I can even change the color. So I'll click this here and I'll change the color. And we have our final result here. So just keep in mind that when you use these S shapes, you need to put an S render between them and your media out. Now let's look at how we can add multiple shapes to one composition. I'll resize my star, move it to the side. Maybe I want an ellipse over here in the corner too. S ellipse, I'll drag this in. Now for the ellipse, we also need an S render object. So I'll drag this over here. Let's connect them. Now you may think you can just put the output into the media out. Let's try that. But if I click and drag, it's not working. What we need to do here is use a merge node, specifically an S merge node. And once again, conveniently, it's in our shapes section here, S merge. So let's drag this down here. So we actually merge our shapes before we put them into the S render. So let's delete this. Bring my merge node over here. Let's drag the ellipse into it. I'll disconnect the star. And I'll drag it into the merge node here. And I'll connect my merge node to the render. And let me organize my nodes just so it's easy to see. And here we have our result. If I wanted to modify the ellipse, I could just click on it, reposition it down here. Maybe want it to be an outline. I'll unclick solid, increase the border width. So this is the flow of our nodes like this. I could also add another shape. Let's try adding an end gone. Drag this here, connect it. I'll resize it, reposition it. Maybe want the color to be blue. Let's make this one like that. And this is how we can have multiple shapes on the screen at the same time. Let me turn off the effects here. Now, the way you control what goes to a viewer is these icons below a node here. For example, my media out has these two dots below. The right dot represents the right viewer and it's white, which means it's on. If I select the left node, I can have a display on the left side as well. Let me turn that off. But the really cool thing is that you can display other nodes on the viewer. So maybe I just want to see my star over here on the left. If I hover over the star, you can see the two dots below. The black dots mean it's not being shown anywhere. Let's display it on the left. 
And here's my star being displayed on the left. I can modify it independently. I could just view the ellipse on the left if I wanted to. It's a very nice feature if you want to debug part of your composition. For example, you can see the final output on the right, and you can view some other node on the left. But I'm usually happy seeing just one viewer, so I'll just set it back to one for now. Let's go back to our editor and see what it looks like. I'll play the video, and you can see what our composition here looks like. And you could do whatever you wanted with these shapes. You could also fade them in and out. And you can copy and paste them to other parts in your video. So if I hold Alt and drag, I can have them be placed there as well. In my next video, I'll show you how to save fusion compositions as presets. That way you can reuse your shapes across different projects. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when that comes out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.